okay, the, the creme de la creme. Why reuse dumbass face here is so important. Why is this so important? And I, I've been wanting to talk about this so much. This, this has essentially blown up, right? Let's just watch it first and foremost, because there's so much here that, I, that I've been wanting to talk about for a few days that it's absolutely ridiculous. And yes, does some of it already look relatively unpolished and not great? Yeah, right, it does. The, this is the first time the game is being shown off every single fighting game, every single 3D fighting game, when it's first shown off. It does not specifically uh, look like it's going to look when it comes out. And I have to say that that if there's one criticism I have of Street Fighter VI, is that, yeah, there's some stuff that's a bit rough, rough around the edges. Uh, and, then, and seeing some close-ups on the faces definitely show, but what they're doing with it and what they're allowing is... is makes me so goddamn happy for a few reasons. Did you s Just let it rock. So, there's a couple of things outside of the hilarious aspect, right? Outside of the fact of the blinding white light that, you know, you guys can't see. There's a few things to take away from this that I think are great, right? Number one, if there has ever been something in a fighting game that allows me to spend real life money in addition to a full $60 price tag, if there's ever been a moment where I've thought to myself, if you gave me a bunch of stupid faces as DLC for the versus screen that characters could do, if you added a bunch of dumb, funny faces where you can get Ryu going, like, and all this goofy shit, and then ask me to spend $5 on those faces, Capcom, you're about to create a tree that grows money. You're about to, if you give Ryu some trolley face and some serious face and some gruff face and all this shit, if you're about to do that and add additional DLC versus faces that characters could do, if you're able to give Ryu the Fortnite smile, my God, man, I would pay possibly five bucks alone if Ryu did his like, his super goddamn cheese ball, I made it, man. If you gave him the Fortnite face, I would actually give you five bucks. $4.99, real money. Please, dear God. I absolutely love it. And for anybody that isn't, for anybody that is not a familiar with this, this situation, anyone that's not familiar with this element in fighting games, this is not new, right? This is not this dude. This dude looks like... <laughs> this dude just looks like th this motherfucker just did Wake Up Ultra to me in round three and won and I accidentally clicked rematch. Oh, good. And then he turns into... Giga Chad. <laughs> Actual Giga Chad Ryu. Uh, I love it, right? I, I just love it. There's some stuff that obviously doesn't look great. I don't think Ryu's beard looks great. I think that some stuff on Luke's face looks a little weird. Just a little. Um, the teeth look a little weird too. But this is incredible. Like, cause this is seemingly like just their versus screen right here. So this is their default faces. And then you can just like do shit and press buttons and they change facial expressions. So you can go like, <laughs> this is so close to, to one of my favorite goofy things that was in Soul Calibur 2 that it's amazing, right? Soul Calibur 2, you had characters screaming at each other on a versus screen just like this. And they would say things like, shut up! Or like, you know, sit down! I loved it. And then Link would just go, hi -yah! And the other Link would go, hi -yah! That was it. Like, I, I think Nightmare would say, squirm! <laughs> you know? They would just scream at each other. And it's such a minor thing, right? It's such a small... It's such a small, minor thing that you don't have to do. And here is where I, I say why this dumb face for Ryu is so important. This is why Ryu's goofy face, it just, just the fact that you can show a little bit of personality with a character that has hilariously shown barely any personality um, throughout the majority of games he's in, the fact that you give that opportunity to the players is so fucking nice. It's a level of give a shit-ism that has been shockingly missing from a lot of Capcom fighting games over the past 10 years. And in the same way that I mentioned why Dan Hibiki would never come back to Street Fighter and then they literally announce him in Street Fighter, that was the moment I felt a change. 
That was literally the moment where the winds shifted, right? Everything changed. There was no reason that Capcom would put a character like Dan into this big esports game because Dan is not an esports character. He's a goofy character. People like Dan for casual reasons. This game is not designed to appeal towards casual players. We want players to just play online and we want players to sign up for CPT events and we want players just to learn our game specifically for the sake of learning the game. Dan Nabiki is not the character for that. And then that all changed. Dan actually was announced and a bunch of other characters were announced that were unexpected and crazy and completely changed and the way their characters were were super interesting and it was like, holy shit, man. I think they get it, right? This was two years ago that I was like, I can't believe it, but this, this could be the first sign that things are changing. This sort of lines up with that. This sort of lines up that, that Capcom is putting a little bit of love, care, and attention into this game that they do not need to, but why do it? Why have characters at the beginning of CVS2 like touch fists together or have unique intros why have characters have these like special special sprinkled things throughout previous capcom fighting games when it doesn't actually do anything for the actual gameplay that shit doesn't do anything for the gameplay right it doesn't but guess what that's the stuff that made people love capcom fighting games that's the kind of shit that made people fall in love with these characters back in the 90s and suddenly when that stuff started going away it became brutally obvious, and that's the moment where a lot of people started dropping off of being Capcom fighting game fans. This is the this is the Street Fighter Cross Tech into Street Fighter V uh, era, where people started to really feel the corporatization of Street Fighter and Capcom fighting games, where they lost a lot of their fan base. And all I'm saying is that this stupid, goofy shit, this, this reused resting bitch face, and Luke trying his hardest against what is potentially the most chiseled bitch of all time, means so much to me that I can't even tell you that there was just some dev at Capcom. You know what? We should we should have like the characters' faces square off in some way and just let players choose it. Hmm. In, in the past they'd be like, oh well how many how many extra units would that sell? Right? Do we have any metrics on what this did for Soul Calibur 2? Do we have any information? on how this is going to affect our bottom line in the end. You know what, if you don't, let's just focus on just getting our characters out and that's it. That seemed, that felt like the approach that Capcom fighting games had in the past, in the past 10 years for the most part. And now to see them like, you know what, this just looks like some stupid fun thing that we can do. Maybe we should give it a shot, right? Maybe we should just try it. A, a lot of people are like, God damn, this is going to, it's gonna take fucking forever to get into a match. I hate this shit already. People are already like, ah, this shit sucks. Here's the funny thing. I think what we're looking at right here is the loading screen. I don't think what happens before this is a loading screen. I think this is a loading screen right here. And we're looking at this on a PS5 and it took about a solid three seconds to get into the match, right? Granted, this is most likely running on next generation hardware for all this stuff, if not a PC version. So that's the loading screen. This stuff here, is all fluffy intro, right? I think this is all stuff that will 100% be skippable. I think you press start, it immediately is going to splash to this. If you just mash through and you're just like, I just wanna play, right? And then most likely this stuff is going to be skippable as well. Because here's their actual intros, right? If you let the whole thing rock, you're, you're essentially being given a giant pepperoni nipple from Ryu you're essentially being given a, a a big spectacle intro, right? Something that celebrates these characters fighting each other. So that's just my assumption. I'll find out for you guys in a few days, hopefully. I love it. Why have that? Why have your characters seemingly in an old back alley garage that some dude just, just graffitied the fuck out of? There's paint everywhere and shit. This is our character select screen. Get, get this, let's just, let's just establish that. Our character select screen is a dingy garage that's covered in graffiti and shit and it's nasty as hell. And our characters are squaring up and then they turn around, shit opens, and then characters get their 1v1 WWE walk-in with each other. On the stage they're fighting in, it's like a custom stage for the stage they're fighting in. Look at the Street Fighter logo back here, right? Look at this crazy shit. That probably needs some light on it, mind you. That, that might need a little bit of light. That's a little bit of dark. This, it is early. A giant celebration of these characters coming together and fighting. 
I fucking love it. I fucking, this is so sick. I know. It's so fucking sick.